Hi, I'm Dr. David Cody, and I'm going to be taking you through a demonstration of how to examine the foot and ankle. With the patient on a couch and their feet overhanging the end of it, look at the feet, comparing for symmetry. To start with, I work my way from the toes towards the ankle. So to start with, I'm going to have a look at the toenails, which I'm looking to see if there's any changes of psoriasis or vasculitis. I'm looking for any skin rashes overlying the foot, any scars or other obvious deformity. Things such as a hallux valgus may be seen affecting the big toe. We may see evidence of subluxation at the MTPs and callus formation or clawing of the toes. The midfoot, I'm looking to see if there's any swelling. And then I'm looking at the ankle joint, particularly for any scars and swelling behind the medial and the lateral malleolus. And also I'll be looking at the Achilles tendon. I'll then have a look at the undersurface of the foot, particularly under the metatarsal heads to see if there's any callus formation. And finally, I'll go on and examine the patient's footwear. So particularly I'm looking at the sole of the foot for any asymmetrical wearing. I'm looking within the shoe to see if there's any evidence of any insoles or any evidence of poor fit. So moving on to feel, the first thing I'm going to do is assess the temperature over the joints. So the forefoot, midfoot, ankle and up to the mid calf. Next, I like to feel the peripheral pulses in case some of the foot pain may be ischemic in origin. And I'll feel that with two or three fingers over Dorsavis pedis. Next, I'm going to squeeze gently across the metatarsal heads, watching the patient's face for pain. If there is any tenderness or pain or discomfort, I would go on and bimanually palpate, a bit like we do in the hands, the metatarsal heads. Next, I'm going to go on and just palpate the midfoot, the mid-tarsal area, the ankle joint, round to the subtalar joint, and into the Achilles tendon. So I'll just demonstrate on this side, this is the subtalar joint. And this is often tender and painful in patients with osteoarthritis. Range of movement in the foot and ankle includes inversion and eversion of the subtalar joint, flexion and extension at the big toe, and flexion and extension at the ankle joint, checking for any restrictions and or crepitus. These should be done both actively and passively. So with the patient standing and weight bearing, I'm gonna have a look at toe alignment. Make sure that the toes are nice and straight. I'm gonna look at the midfoot and particularly the foot arch to make sure that that looks normal. Sometimes you get a dropped arch, and this can still happen in a normal patient, but when they come up on tiptoes, it should resolve. If that doesn't resolve on standing on tiptoes, that can often mean that there's some problem within the midfoot itself. Can you turn all the way around for me? And then I'm going to have a look at the uh, back of the foot, the hind foot. Particularly, I'm looking and comparing sides, particularly the Achilles tendon for thickening. Again, I can have a little feel to see if there's any thickening or tenderness. And I'm looking at the alignment of the hind foot, that there's no varus or valgus deformity to indicate some underlying problem within the ankle or the subtalar joint. Function. So finally, I'll look at the gait cycle as part of function, and I'll be assessing this for the normal cycle of heel strike and toe off. I like to do this with the patient walking across me from the side, and then I'll also do this with the patient walking directly towards me. I'm looking particularly for symmetry. Does the patient spend an equal amount of time on each step? If they have an antalgic gait, for example, they may spend less time on the painful side.